Welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Park Hutter, and it is great to have you with us this morning. I want to begin with some thank yous and some announcements. Uh, this week we had the community dinner and um, had a, a lot of folks come for a Tuesday night in the summer. Uh, we made pot pie. Uh, I should say, when we, I say we, I mean Amy Larson made pot pie. <laughs> Uh, and it was very good, um, and we were starting to worry we were going to run out, so I think we pretty much served it all. It was great. Um, this was also uh, a week when I traveled uh, on Saturday to uh, participate in training for the Walk to Emmaus. Uh, it's a spiritual retreat that happens in the fall, and if you are interested in uh, doing something like that, uh, there's a men's walk and a women's walk, and I'd be happy to share some more information with you about that. Saturday morning we also saw our mission trip off. Uh, we have 15 uh, youth and adults who are uh, on their way to the Blackfeet Reservation out in Montana and they've already started posting pictures on Facebook of their travels. They're having a good time so far. Uh, looking forward to hearing their story next week when they get back. Thursday we've got some event going on. What, what do we have going on? Chicken queue. That's right, and uh, uh, Ben tells me I'm going to have to wear a chicken hat next week. Ben's goal was to order 700 meals and wear a Packers jersey, and we, he ordered 800 dinners. So next week will be a big Sunday in church. The mission trip report will be in. I'll be preaching a chicken hat, and Ben will be in a Packers jersey. And we do, uh, there are some walk-up dinners available, so if you about 120 walk-up dinners. So um, go ahead. If you missed it, you can still uh, come and get chicken dinner on Thursday. Friday, we have something kind of unusual going on. I am going to be doing a wedding for people you don't know, but you're invited. <laughs> um, you may remember our exchange student that my family hosted, uh, Maria Victoria Delgado Riera. Uh, she's a Rotary Exchange student, so she's been living with other families over the course of the year, and her time in America is about up. Her family is coming to visit this week, and they got in touch with me, and uh, her mom said, you know, we got married uh, in front of the judge uh, 19 years ago, and we'd really like to have a church wedding. Would you do a church wedding for us? I said, I'd be delighted to. And then she emailed back, and by the way, we don't speak any English. Can you do it in Spanish? <laughs> So Victoria is going to be helping co-officiate a uh, wedding renewal service for her parents at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. Now, uh, they don't know anybody in the U.S., but you are welcome to come uh, as a guest. And it's going to be followed up with a potluck downstairs. Uh, Maria's mom is going to be making uh, some Venezuelan food to share. And if you bring something to share, then we'll just have a wonderful party. We'll probably see some of the Rotary folks and some of Victoria's school friends here. So uh, please, if you're available Friday at 4 o'clock, come and enjoy. We're going to have a nice time together. We have a, a little something coming up in a week or two for kids. What is that? Um, I need some adult help, unless you want 70 children running through the church amok. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need some adults to help support a couple of the stations, um, which basically you talk to the kids about the same thing four times each evening. Um, I need some adults to help our cooks that do the pre-VBS meal. Um, I have cooks for each night, but it's nice to have a couple extra hands to get things ready. I need about one or two adults more for Sunday evening to help greet and um, help people who haven't been to this church before find the registration area, so standing by the doors. And I need a couple of adults to help prepare the snack, which would begin about 5.30 each evening. I have a leader for that station, but could use some, again, extra hands. And finally, um, some adult crew leaders. What a crew leader does is they travel with their little pack of kids, usually about six to eight kids, and they travel from station to station. There's no lesson involved or teaching involved. You just make sure your six to eight kids are always with you which can be challenging. Sometimes they hide under pews. And then you lock down the church. But that never happened. No, nah, never. 
So anyway, if you are able to help with any of those things, please see me um, after church today or um, give me a call during the week and I will plug you in. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Um, VBS starts on July 29th and with it, we'll begin another sermon series uh, called Shipwrecked. So that's gonna be fun. Um, just a few last things. Um, we have three options for kids during church these days. Uh, for younger children, uh, we have a nursery down the hallway, or we have a uh, children's worship area over here where they are welcome to play and participate in worship. And then uh, following the children's sermon, we have children's church available down the hallway for kids ages four through fifth grade. So uh, we'll dismiss kids for that if they want to go. Um, if you uh, look in your bulletin, you'll find a blue card. This is our attendance card. So uh, church members and regulars, uh, just put your name in here. Uh, we only need your address or phone number if something has changed. Uh, you can write prayer requests on here and just drop it in the offering plate. If you are a guest, then go ahead and fill this out and take it back after the service to Lisa back there at the Welcome Center, and she has a gift that she will give you in exchange for your card, and she'd love to get to know you just a little bit. Uh, and then finally, uh, we are currently working our way through our Good News series. Today is uh, community news, and so we're going to be looking for your stories of good news. There'll be a time uh, during, uh, at the end of the message where we'll be able to turn to the folks around us and share some uh, stories of good news that have been happening in our lives. And so you can start thinking about that now. What do I want to share uh, with folks when the time comes? Okay, we're going to go ahead and begin by greeting each other with the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. Good morning. Let us join together in the call to worship as in your bulletin or on the screen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we may fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings ordered by your governance may be always be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then we'll join in singing um, hymn number 128.
You may be seated. Our opening scripture this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. You may open your, hymn, your pew Bibles to page 1077. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Thus ends the reading. Will the children please come forward? Good morning. How are all of you this week? Okay. I'm tired, yeah. Me too. All right. How much encouragement do you think it takes to influence somebody else? It depends on the person. It depends on the person. So you, if they're really grumpy, it might take a while. Yep. Yep. So it could be a little, it could be a lot. Maybe, do you think it's ever more than what you guys can handle? Yeah, you feel that way sometimes? Well, I'm going to do a little demonstration to show you that, honestly, it doesn't take very much to encourage somebody. So I want you to, these are two canisters of water, and I want you to think of them as people, like the water's people, okay? And then I have a little thing of food coloring. Can you hold my microphone for me, please? Thank you. And... This food coloring is going to symbolize an act of encouragement. What would be an act of encouragement? Sure, you can, you can encourage someone that is, doesn't, is kind of afraid to do something, they don't think they'll be good at it, that, that they'll, be, they'll be good or they should give it a try. Yep. What else could encourage somebody else? Other people when they, when they need it, like if they haven't done dance before and they need help, you can always help them. Yep. Yep. I know on some of these hot days, I've seen some neighbors bring out a water bottle to their mailman and do something nice for them and kind of encouraging them to get hydrated again so that they can finish their day. It could just be saying hi to someone, maybe, or sitting by someone at lunch that is sitting by themselves. That could be encouraging. Has any of you ever written a letter to somebody before and sent it in the mail? I don't know. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, your mom could help you. Mom or dad can help you with the addresses, right? Yep, well, that could be encouraging, right? Yeah, okay. Well, I want you to think of this food coloring as any one of those encouragement items, okay? So I'm going to drop a drop in there and stir. It was one squeeze. How about that? So, boy, that had a big effect on that water, didn't it? Yeah, it turned the whole water blue, not just, a, not just a little part of the water blue. Yeah, so that one encouraging thing had a big effect on these people. Now what happens then, if someone feels encouraged, what do you think they're most apt to do? Yeah, they want to go encourage other people. So what they do is they go out and they pour their encouragement on other people, and it doesn't take much before it has an effect on a whole new group of people. So now they have been encouraged. And that's what God wants us to do with that lesson today is, does anyone remember what uh, Mr. Holbert read right at the end of that message of the scripture reading? No. Pastor Park does. <laughs> he said to, that we are to continue to encourage other people and build other people up. And that's what happens. We'll have an effect on so many other people when we do that. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, be with all of us as we try each day to encourage each other. Help us to build each other up to build your kingdom. Amen. 
All right, we uh, frequently share God moments and good news here at church. Uh, This week, in preparation for this uh, message on community news, I asked on Facebook if we had people in our congregation who'd be willing to share their story uh, about uh, something uh, good that has happened to them or some way that God has moved in their life. And uh, Chuck had offered to share his story this morning. You want the microphone or the podium? All right. Thank you. This has to do with uh, a keychain. And you notice on the keychain, it's got a red dot. That red dot is instrumental to me in this story. I take you back 35 years. It was 1983. As a Boy Scout Scoutmaster, I had taken a group of young men from the Milwaukee area up to the northeast part of Wisconsin on a summer week for camp out. And one of the adults and I filled our two station wagons with about 10 boys and drove over to Krivitz area to raft on the Peshtigo River. Now it was 1983, I had just bought a brand new Chevy station wagon. When we got to the raft company and in our gear, there was a, a, the wall in the office had nails on it, and that's where people, smart people, placed their key rings. I don't know what got into me that day, but having a brand new car, I thought I'd keep the keys with me. I was wearing swim trunks, and I put the keys in my pocket. And we got onto the river in our rafts. These rafts were two to three man rafts. A couple of adults easily fit in the raft. We're at a part in the river that had a five foot waterfall. We'd paddle through that fall. And as we got through, we'd paddle over towards the shore. And probably some water got in the raft, so we tipped our rafts over, got the water out. And then the raft company Uh, guides allowed us to carry our rafts on shore back upstream and come through the falls again second time this time with no paddles so we'd guide our ourselves into the middle of the river with our hands go through the fall it was a ball we enjoyed it It was a warm day got over to shore tipped the rafts over get the water out did it a second time well on the second time walking up, carrying the raft. It dawned on me to pat my pat my pocket, make sure my keys were in there. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> they weren't. So I double checked, put the hand in, no keys. Check the other pocket, no keys. Here I got five kids, 25 miles away from summer camp. What am I gonna do? Brand new car, how am I gonna get into my car? Got the raft back in the water went downstream, got out. I had the other adult and the boys helping me would look around. The water was knee deep, so about two feet to three feet deep in the spots. All I could think of doing is praying. I didn't have any other uh, thought but to pray. It was, in my opinion, a dumb little prayer But what it did is it calmed me down. I asked for help for the Holy Spirit. And uh, it got me to think a little bit. What's my chance of finding my keys in the river? But I think the Spirit calmed me down and got me to think what my wife would always tell me. Think back to what you did. You came through the waterfall. You paddled over to the shore. You tipped your raft over to get the water out of it, right about, I don't know, in this area. And I stopped, I looked down, right between my feet, in the sand, I saw the red dot of my keychain. Picked it up, and there I had my keys. 
So that was a good moment for me. <laughs> that was a God moment for me. My prayer was answered that day. So maybe that primes the pump a little bit, and you can start thinking about the ways that uh, you've seen God working in your life, uh, big and small, and we'll share those uh, a little bit later. Thank you very much, Chuck. We're going to continue with our prayer of confession right now. Uh, this is on the screen, or you can find it in the bulletin. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have been sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Friends, may Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Well, this month we've been engaged in the Good News Challenge here at church. Recognizing that bad news has a powerful effect on us, we have challenged ourselves to spend a few weeks and give up reading or listening to the news and instead focus on good news through reading scripture, through thinking about our blessings, through praying our thanks to God, and through sharing positive stories with each other. Now, uh, I know a bunch of us are giving it a try. Who's giving it a try? All right, I'm seeing some hands. Thank you. And uh, going okay so far? I have to confess that it's, uh, it's a habit for me in the morning to get my cup of coffee and pick up my phone and bring up Google News. And sometimes my thumb has gone there, and then I've had to back out real quickly. And uh, uh, I also play chess online, and I have been, uh, so my back out is going to my chess games. I've made more moves in my chess games in the last uh, few weeks than I normally do. <laughs> I've heard a lot of stories, uh, and in a bit we're going to take some time to share uh, stories with each other of good news. But our reading today, this morning, is Paul's version of the Good News Challenge. Now, 1 Thessalonians, it's not a letter we go to a lot, but it's actually probably the first letter that Paul wrote. He wrote it as early as 51 AD, just 20 years after the life of Jesus. Paul had helped to plant the good news of Jesus Christ's resurrection in the church at Thessalonica. That's in modern-day Greece, modern Greece. But immediately after, Paul had moved on in his mission to plant other churches. And then he began to worry because he was worried that others would come and they would plant seeds of doubt and bad news among the young followers at Thessalonica. 
And this letter is Paul's response to his challenge and his challenge to the church. Now then and now, the bad news folks seem to draw, be drawn to darkness and to dark deeds. They like to criticize and gossip. They like to spread lies or gloat over unsavory truths. Kind of like ambulance chasers who love a good car wreck. It's almost like they get drunk on bad news. They're addicted to it. Paul says we have to defend ourselves against this attitude. Since we belong to the day, he says, let's stay sober, wearing faithfulness and love as a piece of armor and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Now, when you hear that, you may be thinking of a knight's armor or maybe a bulletproof vest, but you know what? It's, it's not the bullets of tragedy that get us as often as it is death by a thousand paper cuts of annoyance. Oh, man, spilt coffee on my pants. Oh, ugh, bad hair day. Oh, rats, didn't expect that bill to come in the mail so soon. Oh, they did pick up the trash this week. Well, none of these things are fatal, but cumulatively all these little things begin to bring us down if we start focusing on the negative. And in response, Paul urges us to defend ourselves with the good news against those paper cuts of fickle fortune as well as the cannonballs of disaster, our hope and our love, our powerful protection. A Bible can stop a bullet from piercing our hearts, but it can also stop us from just being picked apart. So how does this work? The armor of good news is simple enough. In John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, Jesus summarizes the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. And in 1 Thessalonians, Paul echoes this. God didn't intend for us to suffer wrath, Paul writes, but to possess salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus died for us so that whether we're awake in life or asleep in death, we will live together with him. Now, it is mighty hopeful to know that no matter what, nothing can separate us from God's love. We are destined for salvation and glory in Christ Jesus. And we're not just talking about a heavenly reward, that pie in the sky, by and by sort of thing, but life in the kingdom of God starting right now. Despite what the nightly news might suggest, the world is a fundamentally good place. It is God's good creation from the dawn of time. And God still looks at the world... God looks at us and sees good. Among the followers of Jesus, the heavenly kingdom of God is reclaiming this world. And for us, it's just a matter of opening our eyes to see the beauty in the world and the people around us. I mean, for goodness sake, we live in Onalaska. This is paradise on earth, right? We've got the church, we've got the river, we've got the bluffs, we've got wonderful people all around us. Um, I took this actually when we were flying down to Texas out the airplane window. You can see the church right there. <laughs> it's a matter of opening our eyes to see the image of God in our neighbors and opening our eyes to see the blessings, even in the burdens sometimes. Spilled coffee on my pants? Well, thank God for a good cup of coffee and that I've got some place to go in a hurry and that I remember to put on pants before I left the house. <clears throat> or on a more serious note, if you've got cancer... Well, you can thank God for the family who are close and supportive or for the healing miracles of medicine or for each day that you live to see the beauty of another sunrise. And thank you, Jesus, for the promise and the hope of heavenly life beyond pain. Now, the best source of good news is the world around us. Paul challenges us, continue encouraging each other and building each other up. Good news is local news. Good news is what we see going on in our church, in our family, in our community. Church is a great place to build each other up. At church, we surround ourselves with a community of believers, with brothers and sisters, and we listen for the good news. We're built up by uh, great stories and God moments like uh, Chuck shared this morning, or we're encouraged by amazing stories like Ben's chicken cue that he's been working on, or we see pictures of our youth group en route to an amazing mission experience. But we all have our own God moments to share as well, those moments of beauty or blessing we've experienced in our own lives. Hearing these good news stories from each other also helps to build us up. So I want you this morning to take a few minutes now to share good news with each other. Turn to the folks in the pews around you and make sure nobody gets left out. 
and share your stories. And then after we're done with that, we'll have an opportunity. If you've got a particularly good story you want to share, we'll, we'll send the microphone around and give you an opportunity with that. So let's go ahead and uh, share our stories with each other in the pews. All right. So we're coming to the uh, coming two minutes here. Um, anybody hear a story or share a story, they'd be willing to just share very quickly uh, with us if I bring you the microphone. I just returned from a wonderful, wonderful trip to Virginia where I spent three days with 31 relatives wow. from ages uh, two to, we won't mention. <laughs> <laughs> When we first moved here 36 years ago, we did not sell our house and couldn't sell our house in Wisconsin Rapids, and we had it for a year. And we were walking outside with kids are in a wagon, and I said to Raj, we have to give this up to God because we've done everything we can, and uh, we have to give it up to him. It sold the next day. <laughs> wow. All right. My husband just had rotator cuff surgery on Thursday, and it went well, and I just, when we have major things like that happen, when I hear about it or with us personally, I just realize how blessed we are to have two wonderful hospitals in this area. It doesn't matter if you go to Mayo or Gunderson, you just get top-notch care, and people who work there need our prayers too, because they do an awesome job. But feels good. Oh man, thank you. Tuesday, uh, my Rotary Club contacted me and as a uh, fundraiser, uh, they had volunteered to do the parking for the Country Boom Music Festival on Thursday night and uh, I said, okay, I'll help. <laughs> that was what we have a heat warning that day. Good plan. Uh, but uh, I happened to, uh, I was meeting Barbara Martin Stanley for ice cream uh, Thursday afternoon and then I was going to go over to uh, the Country Boom Festival, and as uh, Barbara and I were visiting, she said, you know, I've got this friend, uh, uh, Patty, uh, who uh, has broken her back, and she's uh, bedridden, and she is just so lonely, and I wish I could get over to see her. She lives in West Salem. I was like, well, do you want a three-hour visit with her while I park? <laughs> Barbara's like, yes! So... <laughs> Uh, and that was wonderful, and I got to meet her friend too, and we got to pray together, so uh, that was a little bit of God bringing things together. Well, this was from uh, Michelle yesterday. She was telling me um, she was getting some retail therapy, and <laughs> she happened to be at um, Walmart, and she noticed that there was a, a mother with two kids, uh, one in middle school, one in elementary school, fourth grade, and she was trying to find her, um, the school supply list. She got her sons, who was going into middle school, that was taken care of. She was looking on her phone, couldn't find anything for her daughter. Her daughter was pretty upset because she wanted her school supplies like her older brother. And she had happened to ask Michelle, she goes, are you any good with this technology? Can you help me find my daughter's school supply list on my phone? And Michelle was able to, to find it on her phone and then texted it to this nice lady. And they were able to get her daughter's school supply list, and her daughter was overwhelmed with joy because she could be like her big brother. Uh, thanks for the witness, because uh, it's in stories like this that we're reminded that God is indeed good, and the kingdom of heaven is indeed already breaking out around us. Sometimes it's little things. Uh, I heard somebody uh, uh, say that they stopped for their coffee, and they had blueberry muffins on 39-cent sale at Quick Trip this morning. God is good. <laughs> and as we share these stories with each other and as we share uh, the warmth of love and brotherhood and sisterhood, we're reminded that the good news of Jesus' love is good news indeed. Amen. All right, let's uh, sing together. Um, there it is, number 369, Blessed Assurance.
Amen. You know, I just realized uh, another uh, blessing that I enjoyed this week. Uh, Sandy is uh, traveling. She's in Minneapolis uh, visiting her dad and family. And so uh, Faith has uh, been playing for us this morning. And that meant that Faith had to come into church and practice this week. So I had to listen to all these good hymns. That was a great blessing. Thank you. Thank you for playing today. What uh, prayers do we want to lift up this morning? What joys do we have? What concerns do we have? Uh, Sandy has asked for uh, continued prayers for her dad, John, uh, as uh, he is continuing to improve, but uh, he needs continued prayer. Prayers for our military folks uh, here and abroad and for those who serve us in any uh, capacity. We are so grateful uh, for what they do for us. Prayers for Cousin Kate, who's going through kidney failure. Uh, uh, thanks uh, be to God for all the people involved in rescuing those kids trapped in the cave in Thailand. Um, and uh, what a blessing. Uh, that was some good news uh, when they got them all out. So thank you. Um, so good news is that you have a great grandchild on the way. So this week. Prayers for Sun Prairie after the explosion downtown this past week. Uh, it's pretty torn up. So, uh, of course, Pastor Jenny's down there, and I'm sure their church is responding. Uh, I've seen a lot of things about the way people have come together um, following this disaster to, uh, to help each other out. So, yeah, wonderful. So, uh, two bits of good news. Uh, you guys went to a neighborhood barbecue with 100 folks and uh, young and old playing together. And then we've got a bunch of folks going to camp this week. So Anna and Shay and uh, I think Cameron's going next Sunday. Okay, so she's a week out yet. All right. Um, uh, it's actually, if you watch the announcement slides, there's a slide that lists all the kids at camp uh, any given week. Uh, so uh, you know who we can be praying for. Uh, very exciting uh, that we can send all these kids to camp. Yeah. Pray for the success of the building project, uh, safety of the workers, uh, for the continued financing of it. Uh, it's, uh, it's neat this week to see that uh, they're shelling in the stairwell, and so you're starting to see walls and things, and that's pretty cool. Uh, pray for access to our parking lots. Uh, prayers for our government uh, as we try to sort out this immigration thing. We need to figure out some humane way to do this. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. We'll begin at the moment of silent prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we are so grateful for the companionship of these good souls around us and for the good stories that we have heard today and for the good prayers that have been offered. Lord, we look around this world and uh, we say that you are good all the time, but sometimes it is tough for us to see your goodness. So it's important for us to hear about it from others. Lord, we've heard today about people who are sick. Uh, we pray for your goodness to be revealed in their lives in healing and in peace and in comfort. We've heard today about people who are struggling uh, through disasters, um, through challenges. And Lord, we pray for your goodness to be revealed in their lives through the help that they need. Lord, we pray for your goodness to be revealed in our leaders, that they can resolve the crises that we face and that they can find ways to work together more amicably and for the good and welfare of the people. Lord, we pray for the goodness of folks that serve us in any capacity. We are grateful for their servant hearts and we pray for their protection and for their discernment. Lord, we have heard about the goodness of what is going on this summer for our youth and our children, whether they are going to camp or going on a mission trip or whether they are just busy in all the ways that kids are busy in the summer. Thank you for this goodness. And we pray for your protection uh, for uh, that they would be safe. We pray that you will surround them with opportunities for joy. We pray that their stories will in turn inspire us. 
Lord, we thank you for your goodness right here in this church, in this city, in our community. That we have things to celebrate together, like our building project and our chicken queue and our VBS. Um, that we have uh, good times to share, uh, weddings and baptisms, coffee and cookies. We are richly blessed. Lord, help us uh, when we struggle to see your goodness. Help us to tune our antenna always to your heavenly frequency. And help us to share the good news with others, that they also might be aware of the ways you are moving in this world. We ask all these things in your name, and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, we have a chance to share our tithes and offerings joyfully with the Lord. I'm going to invite the ushers to come around. If you'd prefer to use uh, electronic giving, the information is available on the screen. Please rise. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. O Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. For by your will, all things are created and have their being. Bless now these gifts that we offer in gratefulness for your blessings. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And I do pray that this has been a blessing for you to be here with us. Uh, if you are visiting and you'd like to know more about this congregation where we build each other up and where we help to put on that armor of faith that protects us against those little paper cuts of life, then talk to the folks around you. They can share the good news that they've experienced here and uh, they would love to sh hear your good news as well. Uh, if you would like some time for prayer this week, uh, give me a call. I'd be glad to get together with you. Uh, if you're visiting, don't forget to go see the Phillips family back there 
by the Welcome Center. We're going to close now. We've got one last song. We've got uh, uh, Blessing, and then we've got Cookies down in the fellowship hall. God is good. Amen. I was somewhere recently, and somebody used the old Irish blessing, uh, may uh, God go before you, God come after you, God be beside you. Uh, but they uh, juiced it up a little bit. Uh, may God go before you to guide the way. May God follow you to give you a little nudge when you need it. May God be uh, beneath you to lift you up. May God be above you to protect you. Uh, and may God walk with you by your side as a friend. Go and be blessed. Amen.